Hey everyone, welcome to our members Q&A uh, webinar. And we have Sifu here, he's back from Israel, Sifu Fu, and we have Sifu Laird here, and I'm CJ Jamie Palaz of Anna Shalin. And we're here to answer your guys' questions, comments, concerns. If you are daring and you want to you know, share your video cam, we can do uh, some live critiques as well. So that's another bonus for those of you who are not Abbott members. You can come on to these webinars and get some critiques done if you'd like. And if you have a webcam. Well, obviously, yeah, you need a webcam yeah. or it's going to be a little difficult. <laughs> but um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, cover Rick's question. He says, Sifu Fu, what can you do if someone grabbed your hair? My hair is long, too. Well, it depends on where they're grabbing it, from the back, mm -hmm. from the top, from the front, from the side. So, um, one of, uh, and, and also then it also depends on where they're pulling it. One of the most important thing is, is Do you want to show some examples? If you ever get your we hair can, We can get up and She can. has really good hair. Yeah, I have really good hair. If your hair gets grabbed and it's from the front, the, the, the best thing is pin them along the, uh, the back of your head. And then you can pull it down. We did a video like this real quick. Yeah. Um, if I someone grabs your hair from the front side of you, like this, when they're trying to pull your head down, you want to seal towards their uh, wrist to their hand. So you can see I'm doing this, and you go with the motion, and you actually want to press your your head towards their their knuckles and their fingers while pressing the wrist into you, which creates the sound of thrust. Oh, sorry, my head's not <laughs> But you see how I do that? And so uh, if they are pulling your head down and forward, you just seal it and they'll like get it. And once you get that, you can turn the wrist to the break. Yeah. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, if it's from the sides and they're pulling your hair from the sides, again, always use the motion. Get it and turn and use your arm to hit either their arm, the shoulder, or the face, depending on the range of the person. So you would just always get the seal because you don't want to have the control because they control your head and neck. And the rule is wherever the head goes, the body follows. So if you feel your head get pulled, immediately go into that and just go in there. See how she's yeah, falling into this? this be bad. And this is my, my, my ability to strike. And again, once I have the wrist control, I will try to lock out the wrist because it's within my, my control at that point. I have it along the wrist so I can break it. If it's from the back side and they're pulling from the back side like this and they're pulling your hair this way, again, follow the motion, get the wrist control here, here, depending, and then you can take the step and dump it again and go back to the wrist breaks. Yeah. Um, we actually, um, uh, Rick, I don't know what level of membership you you are, but if you go into if you're a junior or above, you can go to the training hall, and I you'll mean, be able to find it under uh, the women's self defense. There's a hair grabbing. Yeah. There a couple. Of uh, and a lot of times, you can take pre-enter. If you can see them go for your hair, you can just you know do techniques. It's like a strike, but you can preemptively stop it if you can see the attack coming. What if, what if they come from behind, people? Let me. Uh, sorry, guys, we don't have you know a camera person here, so I'm having to kind of. Do this on the fly. I see that we're a little fuzzy, so I'll leave out an auto. Okay. So, so what if I come from behind? Well, the behind is hard. But, but again, yeah. wherever it is, where penny board is, get to the hand and get to the wrist. Uh, if they happen to pull, and again, it's going to depend on how quickly you respond to it. Right. Uh, whether they pulled you to the ground, whether they took major step. Uh, a lot of it is, you know, first thing is be aware of your surroundings and be aware of what's around you. Now, if you do get grabbed by mistake, if you get grabbed and you pull back. You know, pin is secure so it doesn't feel like your hair is being pulled out of your head. And then from there, based on the energy, if I'm being pulled, I want to seal. And I want to turn so I can't get them, uh, give them a direct pressure on my hair. So if she's like this, you know, and she's pulling my hair back. And I don't want to be like this. Yeah, I want to try to create a turn so I can control that wrist. And then again, I can follow. You can see how she's going you know, through this, and I will just throw it on the turn. And a lot of, again, most importantly, in, in the Golden Gun system, it's all based on the first principle of what's the energy dictate? What is the energy telling you to do? Okay? And then you have to learn how to utilize that energy to help you return that to them, not against them. Okay? And just so you can see, this is how long my hair is. <laughs> so it's a very long hair. Okay? Uh, so when I get my hair pulled, I don't like it. <laughs> it pulls my hair off. That's fine, right? So let's see here. I'll put this back down. Sit back down for a little bit. Well, I hope that answers the question since I can't see what you're saying anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it did. That, that was good. Okay, so um, I'm going to go to. Oh, Dominic says, speaking of hair, how long did it take you to grow that hair? Not only Abbott's get to know that one. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I've been growing it for like 20 years now. I, I actually was down to my knees after the past my knees, I cut it. Because it was getting uh, split ends, so they said that if you cut it, it's healthier. So it is. Cut it. So, but yeah, it was past my knees. It was like down here at the longest, and uh, I cut it. 
just so I can have healthier hair. I don't feel any healthier. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. It's just better for your hair. So it is, yeah. It keeps it from being all like caught up. It, it is starting to get split ends. Yeah. And I think, you know, the longer your hair is, the more pressure it puts on your roots. My hair, the hair is sitting at the roots because the, the weight is mm. pulling So it's actually my hair like this thick at the bottom and then this thin at the top. So cutting I think helps. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so um, we have uh, Rusty who sent in a couple questions via oh. email. Seafood, do you teach aerial kicking? Yes, we do do that in the animals. Um, I do it for the health. I don't believe jumping in the air as, 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 as efficient or as beneficial as doing low kicks because it takes more energy. You're exposing the air. She's so got to cut the angle. He can knock it down. It takes longer to recover. So aerial kick to me is great if you can, like, say, stun the guy and you've been training for years and years and you can do it really easy. I'm not saying it's a no good to use but it requires a lot of discipline to get your training up to do that and it does take more energy to do an aerial kick than it is just to just drive your leg forward to a front kick side kick or slide kick you have the ground you have the earth to help you you're quicker to recover because of that it's harder for god to defend a lower kick than it is a higher kick most people are, are very uh, adaptive like especially if they train to put the hands to protect the face you know that's what they do so it's a lot easier for them to protect themselves this way and dodge it is than to tack them from the midsection down. Awesome. Um, speaking of five <laughs> animals, Rusty wanted to know, when do you expect to post the five animal curriculum? We get this question a lot. <laughs> um, we have a lot to do. Um, I could start it, but animals is like taking everything we've taught and think of that as one section of animals. It is so in depth, it takes much more to, to uh, train. Not saying that you can't, but we just have to have the time to break it down. It right. does take a long time. The form is like 10 times longer than my chunk tool is. So for me to do the form and break it down, it, it's going to take us like like months just to break down the form. And then on top of that, teaching it, breaking it down as well. So teaching it, it, it takes a long, long time. Um, it takes a lot more time and dedication to practice getting it. So uh, we do the, the Wing Chun, the Nordic Na, and the Tai Chi and all that because it, to me, it's same, getting the same benefits. Just remember, Wing Chun is the derivative of the five animals. So it's not like you're learning something that's totally, totally off. And if you do master the Wing Chun a little bit, yeah, then learning the animals will be pretty much easier. But you're not, I'm not saying you're not missing anything, but all the principles of energy is what you're looking for. If you're learning how to, to do combat, I don't care what style it is. Style is just a word. You know, like like in, in um, Wing Chun, this is what they call Tanza. Well, Tiger's like this. What's the difference if I pair it this way or if I pair it like this? You know, I mean, it, it makes no difference. It's, it's really about how you control the energy. And to me, that's what matters. Uh, st style is just a word. The way you move is, is, is describing how you want to flow. But again, it's, it's how you flow your energy to the point. I just came back from Israel. I met this guy, and he does a lot of physical body control and everything like that. He was really good at what he does, but he didn't know how to control energy when someone, an outside factor was there. And it was just, he's been doing it for years. He can balance himself, do a handstand, do push ups, or do a handstand. He was able to fold one handstand, do amazing. He was really, really good. But when it came down to outside forces coming on, no clue, not a chance. Wow. And and it, it, it's really very, very important to understand not the style of the art, but understand the essence of the art, of how one should move. And that's what, you know, the, the no doubt, no doubt not so good because it doesn't matter if you do karate, kung fu, uh, judo, jiu -jitsu, it doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. It's how you move. One style can be in another style, it's not because it, the technique is a failure, it's because the person failed the technique. You know, I always say, Technique don't fail you, you fail the technique. That's why it doesn't work. And then a lot of people who go this and they go, oh, this doesn't work, that doesn't work. It's because they don't know how to do it right. So they'll say it's the technique's fault. And oh, actually, I see people do it. I see, oh, that's the wrong technique because of the way they move their energy, not because the technique is wrong. This is a proper time, but people do this as a time. You know, it's like bad technique. The time style is about connecting and laying on top to control that point. So you can move along. So she's punching me, you know, I'm here like this and she's pushing into me. A lot of people will push and that's the wrong energy because you're going against the force. When it's like this, she pushes into me. And I, 
control and you can see I'm still there and then I can move. So, you know, when I do that, let's say this is the tiger. So do it again. Here, let's say I do this. Here, push in, snake. Here, wind chan. Here, well, you know, it doesn't matter what I do. It I do it, it if, all, right. if you look, it looks similar. Okay, it's because energy is energy, it's universal. So what I what I change my hand will describe the the action that people see. Like if I do this, people say, Oh, that's one chan. But if I did it like this, then they'll say, Oh, that's crazy. But I do it like this, oh snake, you know. But if you look at my arm, it's still the same. It's not like I do one chan like this and I go out I'm like like this, I change it. It's, it's still the same, the structure's the same, the base of how the movement is the same. You gotta look at the way your energy moves because that's gonna make the difference between you succeeding or failing, not because you pick a style and you don't pay attention to the way the energy works. You know, like I said, like this guy I met, he's great at what he did with his own body, but he could not control energy uh, when he connected to someone else. And in, in the end, what good is that if you do it for combat? If you do it for your own health, great. He was great at what he did. But when it came to combat, it was useless. <laughs> it had no purpose. Like fighting a two year old kid, it had no value. So for you, it's all about training the energy to control. That makes sense. So basically, you know, when we do get past the foundational stuff, then we will. But do we have a set date on that? No, not really, because as you probably I'm going to say 10 years. That way, <laughs> if it's early, you'll be happy. If it's in 10 years, it's expected. I'm pretty sure it'll be before 10 years. No, um, we'll say 10 years so we don't yeah, get to it. Yeah. 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 Um, but we're gonna try to get to it. Right, right. We've been filming straight for a little, like, because we started filming actually in January of 2014. We launched May 1st, 2015. So it's almost our birthday, and Ashalyn's third birthday. Yay, everyone! Um, and we've been filming like every week since then. Yes. And I think there's been maybe only a couple weeks we've taken off because you know, of rain, because of rain, or seafood had vacation, or, or Larry had vacation, or something like that. But for the majority of that, those three and almost three and a half years, we've been filming nonstop, and we're still not even to weapons yet. You know, so that, that's so probably much to cover. right. That, that's going to be the next thing. Like literally, like Sifu Fu is like an encyclopedia of kung fu, and we're just Britannica. Everybody knows all kung fu, <laughs> right? Right. And for those of you, right? Fu. Yeah, the vast encyclopedia of uh, Britannica going on. So we want to get all that good information out, and we're doing our best to put it in a way that makes sense for you to train and start from square one and work your way up. To what, what, what I'll tell you, we can start to do maybe within a year or two is I'll start the animals in terms of the essence of understanding its movements but not necessarily the form the breakdown because it, it, it would just involve so much time that we're going to have to sacrifice the you know and all the other stuff if yeah. you get to. but i can absolutely start teaching the essence of the animals like how the base of a tiger move and practicing that uh snake and learn how to just you know create different types of movements and grab the essence of the animals not necessarily the whole system and work with that and that we can do definitely Absolutely. Catherine says, do you have any tips for not getting pulled off balance by the opponent when doing takedowns? Uh, depending on the takedown. But the most important thing is rooting. The tip I could tell you is sink your hips low, keep your body um, level to your, 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 your hips. In other words, anytime someone wants to take it down in, in, in almost any way, the best thing I could tell you is the perfect is, person to take you down. Is, Come on, keep it there. Get your arms out in front of you, keep your, your, your tuck, and get your root down. So if he's coming at me, and I'm not going to tell him how to come at me, he'll just tap me anyway. It's, it's, it's just get your root down, and so get your base. If you see what I'm doing, most people say do a sprawl because they're trying to get the legs away, okay? We don't want to get that. We want to enforce our structure so we can connect to the person. So if he's coming at me, not like this, I batch him. You see, you take it again. I have control here. So you see I'm on the ground. Then I can have the control towards the neck, towards the arm. I'm not playing defensive. I'm playing counter-offensive. I don't want to use a takedown as a way to get a, get from taking down. I want to use it to go down with him and tap him. So uh, a great example, one of the techniques I really love to teach is if someone's going for my legs, I actually will shoot down with him. And I actually, he's while he's attacking my leg, he's going for the leg takedown, take my leg, they attack him from the head and the neck and I don't control the body. So I actually want to create counter-attacking techniques. I don't want to be taken down where he takes advantage. I want to go down and take advantage of him. So I go into locks. I go into counter locks. I go into rooting so I can use forward energy so I can use my arms and my body to press on the opponent. So rather than trying to get away from him, 
I get into it. What if someone's trying to take you down this way? Here, I'm, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, listen, if someone takes me, happens to pick me up in the air, I'm going to be pretty much done because I don't have brooding power, I don't have control. But if you feel someone grab you in the heater and you can easily take, take me up, it's just, you can just pick the hands up like this, you can prevent stuff. The other thing is now that I have this, I want to control his limbs because for him to take me, he's going to use two parts of his uh, being, okay? His legs and his arms to get the power to take me. He's going to use his body as a focal point and he uses his arms and legs as leverage. So in the end, when we're up to take control of him, to stop him from being able to take me and flip me, you really want to make sure that this is controlled and this. So take me, take me. Okay, and so you can see what I'm doing. I make it so he cannot. Uh, you can see it's very different. Now, if he picks me up in the air, then I'm in trouble because I don't have a ground. So he's here like this, I'm done. Okay, the best thing I can tell you is if you are picked up, don't try to prevent the grab, take the hits. Oh, go for hits. Go for hits <laughs> as, as your first means because you don't have the ability to counter them anymore. So if you can't create um, counter uh, grappling technique, and you go for strikes. Okay. Simple rule of combat when it comes to locking or striking is you can't lock, strike, if can't strike, lock. That's how it works, okay? So if I cannot lock him out because he might be holding tight, resisting me hard, then I'm gonna go for the strike because he's focused on not letting me lock him. So I go for the strike. Now, if I can't go for strikes, that means he's got me occupied. He's holding my hands, holding my arms, so I'm gonna find a way to lock him. So if I can't strike him, then I have to find a way to lock him. So I'm gonna go for locks. Okay, so then, you know, based on what the technique is, <laughs> the rule of, 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 of combat is can't lock, strike, can't strike, lock. And that's what you want to keep in mind. If I'm trying to lock him, I can't, he's holding hand. I'm going to go for strikes. And again, if I'm trying to strike and he's locking my hands out so I can't, then I'm going to go for the locks because he's occupying my limbs somehow. I'm going to have to find a lock to do that. So that's basically what you want to just think in mind. Can't strike, lock, can't lock, strike. That's what you want to put. And you put that in... In your play, every time he's focused on stopping you from striking, you go into lock. He's actually trying to prevent the strike. That's his mindset. So you don't play the strike because you're going against what he's ready for. Go for the locks. And if you're trying to lock, and he's got his hands holding to prevent you from lock, then hit him first and then go for the locks. Because you're playing opposite what he's doing. And that works better for you that way because he's not focused on um, on countering what you're doing. He's not able to counter count what you're doing because you're doing something else. Okay, can't strike, lock, can't lock, strike. Simple rules. Awesome, awesome. Get this back oh, over here. Yeah, I love using the ball. That, that's usually my office chair, everyone, so. Look, who am I? <laughs> All right, so I see a lot of people are not using the Q&A section. Um, I believe it's in the same spot as on mine, so if you uh, ho hover over the, the actual webinar screen, You'll see there's a Q&A thing and click on that. I, I believe it looks the same um, on your end as it does mine. Just because it's, it's kind of hard when everyone's typing different stuff, like, welcome back, Seafood, Dominic says. Welcome. Um, <laughs> Thank you. It makes it hard for me to see where all the questions are, and it'll put it in a separate thing so I can see the individual questions a lot easier. Um, David wanted to know, how are you preparing for the end time spiritually and in other ways? Uh, being the Lord's will. That's it. Okay. Simply put, uh, if I'm in the Lord's will, I'm immortal to all the people. Just like Paul. He couldn't be hurt, couldn't be, he got bit by a poison, a snake, did nothing to him. Uh, if you're in the Lord's will, you're invulnerable until it's time for you to come. Right. So you just make sure every day you pray, you seek God's will in your life, and you do it with the best that you can in your heart. See for Larry? What he said. What he said? <laughs> you know, spiritually, that's it. I mean, it is. Because, and people, yeah. just to give you an idea. A lot of people worry about the end times, and they're like wondering, like, well, you know, if this is going to be terrible. Listen, you're in God's will. That's and we're it. told not to worry. Like, yeah, why well, worry? What well, you should be worried about is, are you doing what God's will, not what the end times should be, because that's not your concern. Your concern should be, Lord. Right, because no man what knows would the you day of time. So, even if you did, it doesn't matter, yeah. because you, as a Christian, should be seeking God's will for your life, and that's it. You, that's worry. Worrying about the right. future is, is not trusting in God. Our lives is to trust in the Lord. You know, as Christians, we say we believe in God. Well, you know, fear is, is, is a sin because it's not trusting in the Lord. Doubt is a sin. It's not trusting right. God. If you're in God's will, you know, Jesus, in the middle of the storm, he was asleep. He was so comfortable in God's will. He didn't care because he knew his mission. He knew that nothing's going to hurt him. 
He was asleep in the bow, not in the stern, during the storm, because he was at peace. When he woke up, he said, be, be, be still, and, he, and they obeyed him, because he trusted God. Remember, he was a man as much as he was God, so there's a side of him that he could have fallen, and we could be just like him. Right, so he just, was tempted by everything we were tempted if by. If he could be tempted, he couldn't have the ability to sit, then he could have died for our sins. He was a representative of us. Right, right. He was tempted, but he so, did not. But he didn't fall. Yeah, he didn't fall into so, it. Our job is to make sure we're in the Lord's will, and who cares what the end? And yeah, so so basically, how we prepare, you know, take care of yourself, mind, body, and spirit. If you do those things and you stay focused, and you're healthy, and you're aware, and you're paying attention to the Royal Kakadesh, aka the Holy Spirit, you're gonna be fine. So don't worry, don't be stressed. My my advice to you is this: you know, someone asked Jesus, you know, what's the greatest commandment of all, and he says, "Love the Lord your God with yeah. all your heart, with all your soul, and all your mind." You know, and the second is just like the first, just as important. You know, love your neighbor as yourself. Yep. On on these two have all the laws of the prophets and everything. So basically, follow those two commandments that God gave you and you're fine. Absolutely. So don't stress. Be be doing your part and all will be good, my friend. All right. So we have, let's see, Dominic said. Um, I saw one of the videos where you were at a conference teaching a knee lock response from an arm bar escape. One of the students there had you on his leg and you couldn't seem to lock his knee. He counter channeled me. Yeah, he claimed he was channel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was counter channeling. Um, but you strength, it wouldn't fail you. Right. There's always a counter to everything. Right. There's a counter to a counter to a counter. Yeah. To channel, so he was able to do it. That was good. He wanted to know um, where he learned that channeling technique. Um, He's my student. Yeah. I've been so. working with him for years. <laughs> yeah, that's why. So, yeah. If, I mean, just like, you know. He's not somebody online student. He was my direct student that I taught him personally. Yeah, like Sifu Larry can and you know do the same thing but a lot of times when we're doing videos he's not going to purposely resist because the average not person counter channel well, counter channel yeah resisting would take his knee out yeah yeah true okay so he's not going to counter he's not going to counter channel it and stuff because otherwise you're not going to be able to learn the lesson so yeah as you learn stuff like it's all a matter of who can counter who first is what it becomes who can outskill who i always like to say you have to learn to rack them to rack them rack them is recognized and capitalized so you have to learn to recognize the capitals before the other person does, and then you get it. Oh, he said it was a great counter. So I think he wants to maybe see a, a counter to that at some point in time. Counter to what? To uh, the knee lock response. Channeling is the best one. It's the best way to counter everything. Right. Oh, I think, uh, you know, when people joke, I can channel it. Can we, can we show them an example? The challenge? Yeah, for, for this particular example, the, the knee lock. Who's that, Dominic? Yes, yeah, Dominic. Dominic. <laughs> well, how to counter a uh, counter channel on knee lock? Well, yeah. 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 I don't think I don't think it would be. Yeah, I'll pick it up. Yeah. Not unless you're up on it yet. Well, I can do that. <laughs> Lots of times, just remember, if you can't lock, what's the rule? I said, I don't remember. If you can't lock, you strike. Ah, you strike. Can't down. strike, you lock. So if someone is counter channeling you, and being on the ground when you counter channel, it's hard to constantly counter channel because you can't move angles. You're, you're kind of on the ground. So in the end, you would go into the strike. So if I can't get the lock, I would go for the knee strike, trying to stop it from channeling, and then I go back to that lock. That's true. When Sifu Larry puts me and stuff, I can't get out of. I'm I'm going for the pinch and and the back grab and whatever I can get at. So that's a, that's a great. Yeah. Right there. Well, it's always <laughs> counter channel you, unless you're in the standing where you can change angles and, and change the way you project the energy. If you're on the ground, it, yeah. you're limited because you cannot roll, you cannot cut angles. So you, it's the best thing, especially on the ground, like those rules. You go for the strike. If you get the knee lock, you can't lock, he's, he's moving the energy down past the knee, going to the neck. Then you want to hit the knee and cause damage. So he's going to bring the energy back into the knee. Then you can start locking. Mm. All right, you're, you're out. You're, you're not going to have to get hurt yet. <laughs> <laughs> talking to Cecil Larry for those of you wondering. He's off camera right now. Let's see. Oh, oh, Dominic said that he tried to put it in the QA, but it was too long. I guess it doesn't want you to have a certain amount, huh? <laughs> he said the end times are supposed to be something to wait for eagerly. This is glorious times. <laughs> He said, I was surprised that someone there was skilled enough to do it strike. 
Yes, strike. Oh my God, Bob says, isn't this seafood Larry get beat up day? Um, it might be. It's, 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 it could be. It's, it's get to learn and understand what you do. It better. could be, you know, CJJ we get beat up day too. We, we can share it. We can share the pain. Uh, David says you're a little too far away from the mic. So you can move up some. Or speak louder. Or speak louder, yeah, that works too. Which I can do. So Catherine wants to know, how did you start posting videos on YouTube? Well, that's a question for Sifu Larry. Sifu Larry. And Jamie. Come on. Well, he started it first, so. What's the question? She wants to know how you start how you started posting videos on YouTube. Well, did you I have use? doubts in doing so in the beginning? And are you naturally comfortable being okay? So it's kind of a, a dual thing. So were you uh, were you shy about being on camera when he first started? Yeah, do you look out if you look at our early videos, man, Sifu looked like he was like a deer in headlights. Yeah, well, even our first videos in, yeah. in Inner Shaolin, like he's so much more charismatic now because he's more comfortable. Also, when it comes camera. to doing videos for YouTube, there's a couple of things I think you have to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. One, there's you're actually talking to a person. So why did you first start putting them up? For, 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 for uh, Eric Tai Chi, it was 2008. We did it during my graphic class. Yeah. That was the first time. Yeah. Yeah. I think you started yeah. towards like the end of 2008. Honestly. I just was recording for my own kind of entertainment, training, yeah. and I asked Sifu if I could put them up on YouTube. And so I think in that one, maybe it was a span of five or six months, I put up about 60 videos all together. And then for a couple of years, I didn't do nothing. I just ignored everything. Yeah, and as <laughs> far as, you know, um, did they have doubts? Catherine, you must not have heard our story because it took me from 2009 when I first started talking to Sifu Larry, and he's telling me about Sifu food. I was like, dude, I want to train in this. And I couldn't find it anywhere near me in North Carolina or in Ohio. When I moved to Ohio, couldn't find it. I kept going, I will help you build the site. I will help you manage the site. I will even pay for my own tuition. I will do whatever. If I, I, I was willing to pay $197 a month for what people are paying $47 a month. What's that? I want to finish. Yeah. As far as being comfortable on camera, I think that's like a stage fright thing. Um, I noticed, I know with Sifu Fu, um, when I first started training with him, I was kind of uh, amazed by just how his, his presence was because he has no problem like talking in front of people, being silly in front of people. It could be a hundred, five hundred. What are you talking about? I'm always serious. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I, I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you a story about Sifu Fu. Uh, if he remembers, I think me and him went shopping one time and, and you know, we were both adults. <laughs> And he got out of the shopping cart in the shopping store. And he went cruising. He's like, look, wee! <laughs> like that. I don't remember. <laughs> so I feel comfortable in front of, of the camera is like being comfortable if you're in a public speaking. You know, you got nerves. And once you get comfortable with that after a couple of minutes, you kind of set up into what you're doing. But like everything else, um, I was taught that if you want to do good videos, you have to do 100 bad videos to get to one good video until you're really comfortable speaking in front of the camera or other people right and and for me personally um for whether it's speaking in public or uh, via the webcam and stuff or a video or whatever you don't really stare at the camera like you're looking at it but it's like using your peripheral view like you kind of just like glaze it over so you're not so stressed out that you're staring at a camera talking and to remember that there's someone else on the other side so like you're talking to your best friend or a loved one or a student or something like that 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 helps me what about you Sifu? uh the teaching it just gets I'm, when i teach i've been doing it for so many years like when i teach i'm in the mode i'm in the mindset so right it's, it's like you're just teaching so, to a student like yeah. someone else is just right there I, I, my mindset is always about making sure that you get what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. not just the good things but the bad things because the more well-rounded you know what's right what's wrong you know, you don't know what's wrong until you know what right is. You don't know what right is, so you know what's wrong. That's why I teach both. Right. Because it gives you a better understanding, more well-roundness. You know, sometimes oh, you can learn what right is better when you understand what the wrong is. And it goes vice versa. Um, my mindset is always in my head. Like, for me, everything's clear and simple. It, but I always have to try and get it to relate to what someone who has no idea what I'm talking about, how to do it. That's why when I started teaching, I teach the science. Everybody yeah. can understand science. I understand principles. That's why everything is always about understanding. You know, I always use acronyms and rhyming principles to help understand what I'm trying to convey. And then yeah, it helps it for memorization. Yeah, and I'm writing a book right now. 
Okay, I'm, I actually I'm writing. I've been writing a lot of it, and um, it's not the ebook type of thing. It's going to be a much it's more be a book book. Yeah, and it's going to be like one you can get off of Amazon kind of book. It's going to be very in depth about uh, the neurodegenerative system, energy, and, and talking about our principles, our energy, understanding why people train or why what you need to train. Like I talk about the three legs, obviously the physical, the technical, the, the sensitivity. I talk about what what each one's important for. Why there's that balance, um, you know. Obviously, your physical is your body. You know, you, you, you can't do anything without the physicality. And, and so, you know, what does a body produce? It produces speed, it produces force, it produces balance, and all that. And then the technique is to refine that to make it so it's the optimal way of performing. And then, like uh, the sensitivity is basically telling you what technique you need to use in that moment of the action when you're in combat. Because you know, I wrote like uh, a technique can be great, it can enhance you, but the wrong technique can break you. Mm. And so the sensitivity in combat is to teach you what technique to use at that moment. So, you know, it's to better understand that I'm writing about, okay, how to train the body, how to train the technique, what are we looking for to train? You know, so all that stuff. So a lot of times I, it's hard to write because I said everything's clear, but I got to write it. And I'm not saying anybody's dumb, but I have to dumb it down to take it to the person who's never heard it, never understood it. Right. To get from, it. From like, like you're taking a toddler and you're teaching them. Right. I got to teach it at the college ABCs, level. And yeah. so it's not easy to write. It, writing like that is not easy to do. It takes me a long time. I read, I reread, mm -hmm. I write down, I read, I reread. I go, okay, with someone who doesn't know what I'm talking about, get what I'm trying to say. Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it's a lot. And uh, in terms of when we did videos in the very beginning, oh, it was disheartening <laughs> for me because when we're doing grappling, everyone's like, man, you stink at the grappling, you do jiu-jitsu. It's like, I don't do jiu-jitsu. Stop saying I do jiu-jitsu. I don't do jiu-jitsu. Stop writing. It was so annoying. And we, and we still get a lot of that. Very stuff where people are like, oh, well, that wouldn't work against the blah, 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 blah. Meanwhile, you know, Sifu has lots of different students that come from different backgrounds or people that just come to because they've heard about him and they're curious, like, okay, can you lock out this or that and whatever. But yeah, it, it is a little discouraging sometimes. The internet can be really rough. <laughs> Yeah, I had, I had um, a video, uh, not a video, a story of this guy named Tom. He saw me from, he was in Iraq, and he's fighting all over the world uh, mm -hmm. in uh, like MMA type of fights. And he saw what I did, and he actually took value of it. He looked at it, he practiced it, and uh, he and in Iraq they love jujitsu, and he doesn't do jujitsu. He's done judo, but he never done jujitsu. When he did grappling with these guys, he used my technique, and he broke through them. They're like, how? And then he saw the value, and then he's trained. Right. He and, and that's trained. the proper thing to do. You shouldn't just like scoff at something, test it out, prove it out. You know, test and, and prove all things. Hold fast to that. Here's the Good. story of this. <laughs> and, and he trained with me for about a month, month and a half, and we worked on a lot of the ground. And we were doing like four hours a day. He was trying to go pro. He got sponsored by this, uh, someone in New York, and he was supposed to go up there and train with them. But during the time uh, he had the break to come back from Iraq, he was before he went to New York. He trained with me like four hours every day, and uh, he understood the grappling part and this and that. And he was up in New York, and he was fighting with these guys who were catch wrestlers, and uh, they were showing techniques, and they were saying how this is, you know, when you put somebody in this, they're not going to get out of it. And you know, I always like to say, if there's room to move, there's room to escape. So he told him, like, I think, it, you know, I don't think that would, that's true because I can see that you can move, so you can get out. Like, no, no, time and time again, we've shown it, people can't get out of it. So in the end, he had to prove it, and they took him in a lock, and he got out of it because he understood how to move the energy that I taught him. If there's room to move, he learned to hit the points, he got out of it. So they're like, what the heck, did you, how did you do that? And he said he butt heads with them a lot. And basically, um, in the end, they were like, where did you learn all this stuff? So he showed them my videos. And they looked there and said, oh, he's good and all, but you know, there's a lot of things that he's doing right there that we counter do this and that. He goes, that's what he wants you to let you think you do. So as soon as you do it, he's gonna use that energy, lock you right in. He's like, trust me, I've been through it. I've done that and I get trapped out because he gives me the room to move and control that energy. He's not trying to like stop it. Fight, he's yeah. gonna use it. So, and they're like, oh, well, he's like, look, I'll give him a call. You want to come down? You can do whatever you want to him. He's like, look, I trained with him for one month and look what I do to you guys. He's been doing it all his life. What do you think is going to happen? So they kind of backed out, not coming down. But right, like, I told him, yeah, they can come down. <laughs> but in the end, they didn't come down because 
he was only training one month with me, granted four hours a day, but within that time frame, he was countering everything they were teaching. And they didn't understand why or how. And he, a lot of things that he was saying, like, you know, you can't get rid of bad habits, you can only to, uh, count it with good habits and we'll rely on it. And they're like, ooh, we like that saying, where'd you get that? He was oh, from Secret Food from New Jersey. And all these things that they were talking about, he would give them quotes that I said, and like, oh, we like that. Would you? So you keep talking about who's this guy? And yeah, he, because of that, he showed the videos. And they were like, oh, well, we would be able to counter. I could see that he left an opening here. And, we would, uh, and he's like, yeah, because he wants you to be able to do that so he can use it against you. <laughs> and that's what people don't get, that we're about energy control. We're not about trying to stop someone from moving and breaking them from that. We want to use their energy and break them with their own energy couple of hours. So it's less effort for us. If you're trying to use more of your body weight against theirs, then strength on strength. And obviously, a 120-pound guy is not going to fight a 250-pound guy and use his strength against him. You're not. But if you can learn to use his strength against himself, then it's much easier for you to achieve your goals. Absolutely. Yep. And Catherine, just to you know, preface, like um, they had tons of doubts. That's why it took so long for Anna Shalom to ever come into fruition. I, you know, and I just kept mm. thinking, okay, I know this is what I'm supposed to learn because when Seafood Larry first started, it's just talking about like how he was learning and what he was learning. There was just something that came over me in my spirit, and I was like, this is what I've been looking for since I was a little girl. And I knew in my mind some way, somehow, and what it ended up being was, you know, in 2013, God put it in my heart that if I wanted to learn this, I need to come to New Jersey. So I packed up my car with my little girl, barely had any money, didn't know what was going to happen or whatnot. I did hope in the back of my mind that, uh, that the site would actually be created, but I didn't know for a fact because at that time, he was still like, no, and he was still like, no, but um, thankfully, thank God, everything came into to fruition in December of uh, 2013. In 2014, we started working on it after our agreement, and then we launched on May 1st of 2014, and we're still going strong. And this guy here still has doubts every single month, I swear, but what we get past it by our our belief in our creator that he put us here for a reason and our dedication yeah, they to just y'all. So. Me to work. They like keep forcing me Oh, <laughs> no. uh, so Dominic, yes. What is the name of the intro song in the Inner Shellin? I always want to go uh, go to it to get it to go longer and love to listen to the full track. You know, a couple of things about that track. One, it's a private label track that um, we I got, got off of Pond5.com. Pond right, we had to buy the rights to it so we could use it. The second one is it's it's not really that long. I um I think the original track is maybe a minute long, mm -hmm. and, and, I, and I actually ended up making a loop track out of it so I can use it for the intro of it. So it's not a real song. Um, it's, 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 I think it's like Chinese. Uh, it's like a theme. Yeah, it's just, it's just like yeah, a general I'll find theme it. song. It's um, pretty cool though. I agree with you. I like you. it too. Yeah, we'll I do. Um, uh, you can make it a longer track, uh, but it, it, like I said, it's really not that long. It just starts to repeat itself over and over. Yeah. So yeah, I can, uh, I'll find out um, the actual title of it and I'll send you a link, Dominic, uh, to share that with you. All right, Bob says, Sifu, about your book, isn't that the same uh, along the lines of Bruce Lee's book, Take What is Useful, Toss What is Not? Yes and no. Yes, in terms of yeah, what he said, but on top of that, we add to it. It's not just take what is useful, but how to make it efficient and effective as well. Because you can say this is useful, but you're going to be spending a lot of strength to make it work. And that's not our goal. Our goal is to take minimum effort, maximum output. So we want to use energy to enhance that, to make it work the most efficient way possible. So yeah, take what is useful always. But, you know, anything can be useful as long as you know how to use it. And that's what our goal is, to make things useful on how you do it. Because a punch can be useful, but it can be a hindrance because you can break your hand on a punch. But, you know, you say, a punch is beautiful. This is how you want to punch. But how you punch can wind up breaking your hand or breaking your face. And so we're not just going to use what's useful. We're going to teach you how to utilize it so it is effectively useful with minimal effort. And I want to add to that. Uh, a lot of people often say, you know, is this like what Bruce Lee said? I love that. Is this like what Bruce Lee said or what Bruce Lee did and Bruce Lee that and Bruce Lee did? And what Bruce Lee really did very, very well was read books by smart people. And his philosophies and ideas are much older than Bruce Lee himself. Right. It isn't like he had these original thoughts that weren't already thought of. 
So he was just famous. He was just like people right, right, right. Him. With him. But these ideas are pretty universal yeah. and they've been around a very long time. Shaolin has always, that's why there were so many styles. They adapted because when one style could not be another, <laughs> they, they evolved it and made it work so it could. So it's nothing really new under the sun. It's just Bruce Lee was very famous. And the same thing, so Wing Chun was made famous in America because of Bruce Lee. He was famous for it because he became an actor and everyone was like, oh, what's he doing? So Bruce Lee wasn't the best Wing Chun fighter in the world. There's no question he wasn't the best fighter in the world. Um, it was just he's the best, most famous fighter in the world. So, you know, that's why he was always improving himself. He was always trying to get better. He was always, because he saw flaws in himself, he saw flaws in his, his movement, he would refine it. And, you know, and as martial arts, that's what we do. We refine what we do. We try to make it better. You know, it's not just about hitting harder, but learn how to hit with less energy. You know, like think of two ducks swimming across the pond. Now on the top surface, they can look like they're doing it very evenly at the bottom. Whereas one might be taking only four strokes to go somewhere, or the other one's doing 20 strokes just to keep the same pace. So it's, it's about what's underneath as well as what's on the outside. You have to learn to connect that inside to make outside work efficiently and effectively. So, you know, and that's, you do it through the energy, the way the body connects, the way it moves, you know, shoulder, elbow, elbow, wrist, whereas a lot of people throw shoulder with the hand. That takes more energy. I can knock someone out that way, but the amount of energy it takes versus doing it like this, it's gonna be more. So we're trying not just to use effectiveness, but efficiency and effectiveness, because if you have to fight five guys and you're throwing everything you got, you might be too tired to fight the other guy because you just spent everything. Whereas if you learn to control your energy, you can last a lot longer. Absolutely. So Dominic wants to know what happened to the really tall guy that used to be in your videos. I think his name was Todd. Yes. Todd Todd transcended. He, 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 he went out the physical world, went to the spiritual world and he, I can't even, I don't know. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> Todd, Todd just hasn't come down in a long time. Uh, he's just been busy. Um, you know, we're not forcing him to come down. We've asked him when he had time. Great, if he could, great, if he can't. You know, it just got into the pattern. He stopped coming and, and we just never bother asking him to come. Yeah, he's actually working um, on a game, uh, a game thing, game. a board game, because he's really into to board gaming and, and different gaming and stuff like that. I think he had a Kickstarter and stuff like that. So he's been really busy working on that. And I think he's primarily working on ground fighting right now with you, right? Yeah. So he's just different priorities. So everyone, you know, has to do what they're called to do in their passion. All right. <laughs> Tomic says he became one with the universe. Yes. <laughs> Let's see. Let me just make sure I didn't miss anything else in the chat. Uh, David says, can you show us an example of what you taught the judo Iraqi that helped him? Um, basically, it was breaking the guard using the elbow. So if someone puts you on guard, you, you put your thigh up and you bring your elbow over and you break their guard out and he was able to pass their guard that way. That was one of the things because a lot of people put elbows and it doesn't work because when they put the elbow, the guy just turns his hips, turns out and it doesn't work. For what I did different was I brought my thigh up and blocked their, their thigh from moving in their hips. And then when you push the elbow, one force, force here, one force here, thighs in the middle, it breaks. But if you only did the elbow, and nothing here, the guy's just gonna move his leg and get out of it. So the, the, the biggest thing that he saw that was different because I controlled the points much better than, than just trying to t- take a motion. You know, uh, a lot of times I teach my students, it's not about the motion, it's always about controlling the point. And if you control the point, you get the motion behind it. Most people try to go for the motion without the point and that's where the failure is. Um, I always teach point control. That's the basis, one of the f- fundamental things I've learned I got is about controlling the points. You know, people do this, and let's say she punches me, people go for this. You see how I'm moving her? That's motion. I don't want to make her hand go to the side. I want to hit this, I want to turn, she pushes in, I turn the point, and then she'll move. I don't need her to move 10 miles away. I only need her, and she see how she's like this, punches her to her face? No, punch right here. I just need it just here. I don't need this. I just need this, just so, I don't want to waste time defending when I use the counterattack. So all I need is sensor. And the reason why I move her hand out of the way is not so like she can't hit me. That's not my concern because she's not gone. My job is I move it out of the way because she punches. It's because she's in the way of me hitting her. So I knock it so I have the purpose of hitting her, not the purpose of making sure she doesn't hit me and then go her. Because then my mindset is defensive first. And I don't think defensive. I think counteroffensive. So her hand's in my way. And that's why I move it out of the way so I can hit her. But I don't push it out of the way. There's a difference. 
moving is through the turn, pushing is through the motion. And we're not about pushing motion, we're about turning motion. So I make her hands move, not because, uh, if you can see more like this, I am not making my hands go out. I'm actually, I turn out. Notice I'm still in the line of attack versus moving away from the line of attack. So I turn my energy out. I don't push my arm out. So that's the major thing. And you do that because of the wrist. You know, people do this, they, that's the arm. People do this, that's the wrist. And look, if she's going for my face right here, and go for that. You can see she's hitting my hand. Do it again. I don't need, all I need is just for her to miss so I can get in. So I'm not wasting time trying to defend. I counterattack, and I hit points to do that. So I'm not making motion to do that. I'm hitting points to do that. And again, if you get control of the point, you get to control the motion behind it. So by me turning her, the best analogy I always give is um, think of a, a rear wheel car and it's driving on the road. As long as the front wheel has contact to the road, if I turn the front wheel, the rear wheel is going to go wherever the, car, the front wheel turns, right? So it's going to turn. Now imagine if you have a rear wheel drive car and you're slipping on oil. Uh, the tire's got oil, the road's got oil, and you're going forward. If the tire is turning, but yet has no contact to the point, it can't influence the car, okay? You'll be going, and you'll crash. And so that's the same thing. We control the point. If you control that point, then the turns you make, you can affect the motion behind it. A lot of people do pushing, and a lot of times they can slip past, or they'll overcommit, or if the force is stronger than what they, they have, it can collapse on it. So we're not about trying to go against the force. We're trying to utilize the force to our point. If you get the point. <laughs> right. You get the point. Bob says, CJ, I need your wizard skills. Why can't I change so I can talk to all the panelists? All right. So Bob, uh, wait, before you type your message right above that, there's a two and it says, um, yours probably says all panelists right now, but there's a little arrow. Just click on that and choose everyone instead. And then when you type, everyone will be able to see it. Let me know that you figured that out. You don't have an arrow. You're on the phone, aren't you? That might be why. I don't know what it looks like on the phone. Um, does it have where you can click on it? Like, does it say to everyone? Can you just like press that? And does anything come up? Go in your menu too. Nope. All right, I'll have to I'll have to research that for you, Bob, and um, let you know. I'll have to find out because I'm not sure. I'll have to do some testing on my phone to figure that out for you. Awesome, Bob. All right, cool. Um, we actually had a couple more questions from Wesley, but I wanted to kind of spread that out with him. So the next one he had was, would you allow your online students to access your physical school in New Jersey? Absolutely. We have people um, that come for vacation um, to, to just train, or sometimes they're visiting friends and family that are over this way or you know, work or whatever, and they come do that. So absolutely, we love when you come train with us. And we also hope that you come to our seminars too, because that's another great, great experience to be able to not just train with both Sifus, uh, but also other students online and offline. And give us a heads up, just don't drop by and say, I'm here. Yeah. And we're like, what? <laughs> yeah, you? yeah, especially with Sifu being gone every other month in Israel. Uh, definitely, if you have an idea of Rusty, when you want to come, uh, email me at support at energyland.com and let me know if you want to do public classes or private lessons or a combination of both, and I will help you figure out something that works for you. And what are your thoughts on NODAC NAS certification? What is, what is certification? What's that? No. Um, we're, we're working on, we've already started um, doing the certification, the basics, the understanding. So if, yeah, if you want to teach, absolutely, you want to be certified teach you have to know what you're doing uh, I need to know what you're doing because obviously you're representing so absolutely uh, yeah that's gonna be something that we're gonna do in person <laughs> um, we're gonna have seminar retreats so it'll probably be I would say probably no more than maybe 15 or 20 people at each one just so that we can be more of a private and we'll experience. go over everything that you need to know yeah like you know anyone can like potentially have to do a path you know if there's a right way and a wrong way right I asked with a seminar uh, in Pittsburgh and this Wunchan guy um, was doing a, a seminar and he did these moves and these girls were standing, I had no idea what they were doing. And uh, I did the move, I did the sequence, but I didn't do exactly the way he did it in terms of rejection of energy. And he came by and he's like, oh, can I correct you? And I was like, sure. And he's correcting me, telling me what I'm doing wrong, the way it should be, and it's like, uh, no. He doesn't realize that 
he was saying like, don't pack here, they would pick the elbow and go to my face. And it's like, first off, I didn't say, I didn't correct him, but because it's his seminar and I wouldn't disrespect him that way. But he doesn't understand that I am not pushing. That's what he right. did. That's why if you do this, the elbow, we're not about pushing the hand, you know? But that's how he taught, he taught to push. For us, it's hit the point, pop it, so as she punches my face, I pop it, I, I, I yeah, arc it. There's no time because I'm keeping the energy in the hand. He cannot bend or she cannot bend the elbow. The second thing is, even if I did this, elbow me in the face, it's never gonna reach. Elbow's too short a range that if you're gonna punch and say that you're an elbow, it's impossible. So he was not understanding energy and he was doing movements and stuff like that. And for him, what he did, it, I, I understand his logic because if you do push pack like this, you might get elbowed. So he has to go to the elbow because of that. I understand he's trying to make sure that you're not gonna get elbowed in the face. But me personally, I don't push back. I, I curve, I, I hit the point, I turn the point. I don't push through the point. He was doing push through. And so the certifications teach you that when you do this, you know exactly what you need to do. And if you're passing along, you're not gonna compensate what you lack in skill because of strength, okay? You know, what we lack in skill, we make up in strength. So if you're not fully understanding why you're doing it, what you're doing and how you're doing it, you're gonna naturally use strength to compensate and you're gonna make it work that way. Right. And that's not, what low deck now is you're gonna you're gonna lose the essence of what low deck now is. So yeah, you definitely need to um, to have that certification, and I need to know you and work with you. So I know yeah. your energy. I know how you're doing it. And so yeah, we're definitely gonna be uh, doing a certification. Yeah, we don't um, have a date because every time I say like sometime this year, it doesn't happen. So I'm not gonna put a date on it. Ten years um, from now. We in are, ten years. We are working on it, but the reality is there's so much stuff that you need to be working on in the meantime. So definitely be following the No Deck Now 101 course. Definitely, you know, if you have access to the training hall, you can add stuff in there to learn as well. Um, we're working on actually creating the curriculum right now, and then that's going to be something that you're probably going to need to study seriously for at least a year before you'll even be ready to be certified then. So it's not, um, you know, like we're not going to run some kind of like a what do they call that? McDojo or Puppy Mill where you're just like, you know, getting ran through really fast. We want you yeah, to be really efficient. Yeah, you represent efficient. the art and I would never do that. I would never displace right. my, my family. Right, my right. So you definitely want to, you know, we definitely want to make sure our students are ready for it first and foremost and have all the tools they need to be successful at it. Um, and when we do have that, you know, we'll have like a level one, a level two, level three. So obviously there'll be different courses for those things and different certification classes to come and actually uh, train and get tested out on. Um, but also with that, we're going to also make a directory where members and non-members who are looking for no deck not certified instructors can actually find them. So um, it'd also be a great way if you are wanting to be a teacher to be able to get traffic because we do have members across the globe and they're always looking for people to train with and learn from. One of the biggest things I can give you is a tip to practice and train together because, you know, everybody learns either through steps, you know, by counting or by, by uh, memorizing beats and stuff like that. Eventually though, it has to come to a feel. So when you practice, yeah, don't worry about breaking it and learning it. Obviously get understanding of it and then try to connect it to the feel. Get your feel up there. Um, you know, you play music through feel. You play, you dance the feel. You, you, you golf because of how you feel. You, you ride a bike because of how you feel. Feeling is how you do things naturally without thought. And combat is the same. You know, any fighter will tell you, you know, they're training combinations, this, but when they're in the ring, they're not thinking that. They're, they're feeling how to move. They feel what to do. And your, your main basis is learn how to feel your movements, you know? And the first thing is feel your hands. Energy goes to your hands. So when you move, you know, I do a lot of solo training. And I always talk about what the wrist is for, how to move into the wrist, and, and feel the wrist. Always feel your energy here. The stronger you start to feel it here, that means the more energy you have, and because you have that, you'll be able to turn and control it better. So always go for your feel um, if you can. Go for the, 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 the technique first, because if technique is there, you won't be able to feel it there. It's like um, playing music and not keeping the beat. Just playing keys and just being sporadic is not good enough. You have to get understand how to hit the keys, and then you have to learn how to work and feel that internal beat. So get your techniques down. Get to understand how to get your hands. This is the most important thing I can tell you is a base one level. Get understand how the hand goes like this. You know, I, I train a lot of people and they go like that and their hand starts to go forward and drop. Or they you go want, past yeah, the and they go past and they're, they're, they're losing. So they don't pack like this and you see the hand drop rather than pack and stay in the wrist. I go, yeah, you can see it's in the wrist. What I do, it's always, 
along the wrist area. So it's in the palm to the thumb, to the back of the hand, to the pinky. So it's in the wrist, okay? Your fingers are stabilizers for the wrist. They are not your final movement in, in the hands, unless you're using it to strike. Fingers are used for grabbing and striking. That's it. They're not used for blocking with controlling energy. They use to stabilize. It's the wrist that controls energy. Your hand, that's why I showed elbow, elbow, wrist, and that's it. Not showed elbow, elbow, wrist, wrist, the fingers. It's actually, if you think about the way the energy works, it's shoulder, elbow, elbow, wrist, fingers to wrist. Not wrist to fingers. But people always tend to let the wrist go to the fingers. The fingers will help stabilize your hands, your palms. Okay, so always think that, keep the wound, always like, for example, if I'm doing that, do I look like I'm going to my wrist or it looks like I'm dropping to my fingers versus do I look like I'm going to my wrist now, right? Versus and, and, and going and dropping. So a lot of the drills that we do, like, is, is am I going to my wrist or am I dropping? Like, you know, like, like if I do this, it looks like I'm dropping, you know, versus like drawing, drawing. You know, we do a lot of wrist control. So, you know, you learn how to use your wrist. Your wrist is the key to doing control and power. You know, when we hit, it's always, it's through the wrist. And how do you get energy in your wrist? From the elbow. How do you get the energy from, from to the elbow? From the shoulder. How do you get the shoulder to drive the energy? From the root, and that's the breakdown. Know the principles. The principles is what's gonna really help you. If you apply the principles to your techniques, it's gonna enhance you very, very much. Right, so for those of you that are thinking about wanting to get certified, definitely follow the current NODAC NAW 101 course. And as you can uh, study extra stuff in Nodak Na, uh, Wing Chun, and Tai Chi as well, because Tai Chi is really going to help you with your energy and staying stable and rooted. Yeah, it's, it's one of those all around um, yeah. system that really encompasses angles and range of motion, where it's like, you know, Wing Chun is very small, that direct, and nothing wrong with that, that's your goal. But, you know, there comes a point which, I, I said to Sifu Larry, I said to Sifu Todd, same thing, you're going to get stuck because you have to go a little bit bigger sometimes, more rounded, whereas which is very direct. You got to open your mind to um, seeing other avenues, how energy works, and not limit yourself. It's like sculpting an ice sculpture with just a pick. You can make a good one, but a pick and something else, like I don't know what tools are. It's like a paintbrush. You know, you have different types of sets of paintbrushes, thick, fat, thin. Mm -hmm. You know, and instead of just trying to paint with one type of paintbrush, you got to see that you can do more creative work by changing that Absolutely. and the way you approach it. And, you know, Tai Chi encompasses to me everything. And if you understand it, you know, a lot of people do it just for the movement. And I've done a, went through a lot of teachers and um, I've met a lot of people who've doing Tai Chi for years and they still don't understand the energy control. They know how to move energy, but they don't know how to control energy. That's the big difference. Anyone can move energy. The question is how you can control it. And under pressure is how you can tell. I had a guy who do Tai Chi for 27 years, went to China, met all these masters. And when I did the thing with him, he couldn't even raise his hands up with just my finger and thumb on. He went right into his shoulders to the pressure. He did not know how to project energy. He didn't know how to move energy, but not project energy. So under the slightest pressure, he went to straining. And Tai Chi is about releasing stress and moving the energy so you don't have to strain to do it. And he went right back to it. So he didn't fully understand how to move as you properly. He used stress to make it work. And it's not about that. It's about understanding how to move energy to make it work. Absolutely. Yeah, I say all the time when people are like, oh, why do you guys teach all these different things? It's because I don't know any person, whether they're a doctor, they're a carpenter, they're an artist, they're an herbalist, whatever the case may be, no one, whatever they do, you use multiple tools and mediums to accomplish the end result. So and you're you a better well-rounded person yeah. because of a profession, you're more well-rounded. Yeah, absolutely. I don't go to the gym and just bench and do nothing else just to train my chest. You know, they tell you bench, pet deck, flies, incline, decline, free weights, you, because it, it gives you a better well-rounded shape and it's better for the muscles overall. Otherwise, you can get a very good strand of muscle and then very low end fiber muscles here, so you're not balanced. You know, it's all yeah. about understanding how to create that control. Be balanced, around. absolutely. So ladies and gents, family, um, we're getting close to wrapping up. Is there any other questions that you have for us? David says the energy times are like the ener your energy the technique, the end times, sorry, the end times are like your energy technique. If you don't know what's going on, you will be caught off guard. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you need to know what's going on and you need to be right. Absolutely. 
anyone else have any comments or questions for Sifu Fu, Sifu Larry, or myself? Make sure that we don't have anything else sent to us via email real quick. Nope, oh, we're good. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for having us on. We really appreciate it. Um, David, I will contact you about that in uh, private. I'll send you an email. Um, we're so happy to have you on and we're so excited that Sifu is back. So this is cool because it's our first one where he's actually here. So it's nice if he needs to do techniques or whatever on, uh, with me or Sifu Larry. It's actually pretty awesome. So I hope you really enjoyed this one. I think it's been actually one of our more entertaining ones and more fun ones. So I hope that you all enjoyed it. Um, the replay is going to be up later on uh, on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you, Bob. We think you're awesome, too. Um, it will be up on YouTube as well as in the Friday update, the weekly update. And I will say this, and I'll probably say this every, every weekend and week that we do these. If you're not paying attention to those weekly updates, make sure that you are, because otherwise you're going to miss out on what's new when we're doing seminars and any of the great content that we're putting out. So make sure that you take the time to invest in your martial arts by spending <coughs> one time. It doesn't have to be Friday. It could be Saturday, Sunday, Monday, but spend one time a week just playing catch up and knowing what's going on inside Inner Shaolin so we can keep you up to date. So thank you all. Pass on the love, share it, like it, comment, and we'll talk to you guys next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs>